he won't give up. And he still pulls enthusiastic crowds, though somewhat smaller now. Sutep Toeksaban kept up his marathon street march for a fifth successive day, trying to maintain some momentum. But after months of this, without movement on either side, violence has become an everyday occurrence. And here, close to Thailand's most prestigious university, Mr. Sutep narrowly avoided injury when an explosive was thrown, apparently from the second story of a nearby building. Nearly 30 protesters and guards were injured. There was gunfire at a protest site north of Bangkok too. But at the military office she now has to use outside the city, Prime Minister Yingluck said there was still no dialogue between the two sides. I think my door is open for negotiation any time. So I think we would like to ask for the protester, that if a protester can open the way, so I think someone can find a way to talk. The cheery faces they show on their marches are deceptive. There is intense hostility towards the Prime Minister's family here, stirred up by weeks of fiery speeches. I asked her whether she believed it would help if her family retreated from politics. No one wants to just stand and let people hate you every day. But I told you that this is the job that I have to respond. If I don't respond, I just like ignore because someone complained me and I said, I don't know what's going to happen with the democracy of Thailand. So that's why it's not only the, the role to hold for my reputation of my family, but we have to keep the de uh, democracy. So Thailand lurches towards a general election disrupted by endless protests and one now unlikely even to produce a new government. It is a frighteningly uncertain outlook for a once stable and promising country. Jonathan Head, BBC News, Bangkok.